In the last two videos, we focused on using Mathematica in order to find the derivatives of data points using numeric differentiation. In this video, we'll take a look at a simple way we can use Excel to do the same. Just so I can refer to the formulas back and forth, I've displayed them here on the right side of the screen. First, we'll start off with the forward finite difference method. Now with Excel, it's much easier to visualize the lengths of the vectors and which data points we can take the derivatives of. So referring to our formula for the first derivative of the forward finite difference, we need the second data point in B4 minus the first data point in B3 divided by A4 minus A3, which is the step size. Now press enter. And the great thing with Excel is that we can just drag the cell down to evaluate the rest of the cells in that column. Now since forward finite difference requires at least one succeeding data point, we can only evaluate all the way up until C22. Now if we compare these to the values we got in the first part of the tutorial, we can see that they are identical. Now for the second derivative, we need at least two succeeding data points. So we know that we can only take the second derivative all the way up until d21. And now we can refer to the second derivative equation taking the third data point from b5 minus two times the second data point from b4 plus the first data point from b3 divided by our step size a4 minus A3. And dragging that all the way down to D21. Now let's move on to the backward finite difference method. Now with the backward finite difference, we can only start from the second data point and then go all the way until the end. So referring to the first derivative equation, we need the first data point B3 minus the second data point b4 all divided by the step size which in this case is a3 minus a4 now dragging that all the way down and now our second derivative has to start from the third data point so from our formula we need b5 minus 2 times b4 plus b3, all divided by the step size a5 minus a4, all squared. And I'll put brackets around the denominator. Now dragging that to the end. Now if we compare this to the data points we got using Mathematica in part 1, we find that they are once again the exact same. And if we compare them to the forward finite difference, we actually get the exact same values, but this time it's delayed by two step sizes. Now let's move on to the centered finite difference. We know that we need at least one preceding and one succeeding data point in order to take the derivative. So that means we have to start from the second data point. So now we can either use the centered finite difference formula, or we could just use the fact that the centered finite difference is the average of the backward finite difference and forward finite difference. So then we'll just take the average of C4 and E4, and then drag that all the way down to our second last data point. And now for the second derivative, we can actually differentiate the same data points as the first derivative, since the formula calls for a preceding data point, a succeeding data point, and a current point. So with that being said, we'll use the formula this time. And in H4, 
we need the third data point b5 minus 2 times the second data point b4 plus the first data point b3 all divided by the step size all squared and now dragging that all the way down We could have also used the same method for the first derivative where we just took the average of the forward finite difference and backward finite difference. But unfortunately that wouldn't give us the first or the last data points. Now if we compare these to the first derivative we had in Mathematica for the CFD, we have exactly the same data points, meaning that our XL values are all accurate and our method was accurate as well. And now finally, to recap everything we looked at, we looked at three methods for numerical differentiation in this tutorial. FFD, which tends to be shifted to the left compared to the actual derivative. BFD, which tends to be shifted to the right. And CFD, which is the average of both methods. We also looked at making functions that performed each of these methods in both Mathematica and Excel. That's it for this tutorial. As always, good luck with your labs.